Welcome to Vince Carter's Greatest NBA Stories. If you are new to this series, welcome. This is the Complete Collection series, where we take a deep dive into some of the NBA's greatest players. If you have missed any of the episodes in the series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right of your screen. If you appreciate the time and the effort it takes to edit these videos, all I ask is that you hit that like button. Hitting the like button really helps the channel and these videos get recognised. If you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button for a new episode in this series. And hit that notification button to stay notified for whenever I upload a new episode in this series. And if you would like to be featured in the next episode, comment down below which player you would like to see next. Without further ado, welcome to Vince Carter's complete collection of greatest stories. What was the most memorable part about that series with him. Him. If I had the ball, run the fast break, Vince Carter was on one end and Jesus was on the other one, I had to throw it to Vince Carter. When you really look at him, you think he's flying. How did he just do that? And Vince was that guy. The passion that's, that stood out to me when I watched him after he dunked, after he made a big shot. You say Vince Carter brought out the best in you. How so? Well, I was always really competitive with Vince. You know, Vince is a special dunker, man. Did you see what he could do? He's a special dunker. Man. He's, a, he's a special, special dunker. I didn't want to do it because I, I knew, I mean, this is my, my teammate. Like, I, I see him every day and what he's capable of. He cocked that thing back on so that. hard. And I was like, man, oh, man. Uh, and then got in the post spin move and cocked it on. Boom, <laughs> right? Right, we were celebrating two totally different things. Yeah. <laughs> that's just crazy. I was like, yeah, I made it. He's like, yeah, what? I'm like, yeah. But, bro, I ain't know I jumped over, buddy. What was the most memorable part? about that series with him. Him. It's amazing. People, I think because he played so long, people forget how fucking amazing Vince was. Oh my God. <sighs> Yo. <laughs> but look, who you think was, who you think had the craziest hops? Ever. Him. Him. You think him, right? Him. Well, I love to watch him dunk. And I saw him do some things this summer that people haven't seen in the game. Because trust me, that guy that right leg, there. The, he had the left leg now. Was a, the most exciting. He took the world by storm. Man, and his style. He, he just changed the culture. We all know Mike was like, you know, Mike was different. Like Dr. J was Dr. J. Then Mike came with the whole. Swag too. You know what I mean? The, everything else, you know, different, a, a little different. And then Vince took it to another level after the Mike. Excitement, that excitement to it, Vince brought the excitement to it. That shit you ain't never seen before. And then, that, and then his, his jumble was so pretty. His handle was so crazy. First step was crazy. His Pure first athlete. step was so crazy. Because if he get by you, you know, you know what's going on. What's grab, going him, grab him before he take off. <laughs> grab before he take you off. You know what's going to happen. No Shaq, doubt. how about my favorite, you, man? What's your Vince, favorite Vince Carter story? Well, it, it's a two-part story, but I'm going to make it quick. It was three guys that whenever I played against them, I let them do whatever they want to do. Vince, T-Mac, and White Chocolate. So D-Wade is going to remember this story. So, and I'm, you know, telling Vince, like, yo, man, you got to do something. You got to do something. So Vince goes baseline against me. I got a flagrant him. He my man and all, but I'm like, I can't have Vince dunk on me. Flagrant. I get a foul. I go to the bench. Couple plays later, Jason Williams has the ball and tries to steal it from Vince. Vince wraps around his back. He comes down the lane and Alonzo Morning jumps. Vince caught that thing back and threw it down on. I'm on the bench like this looking at D-Wade. I'm like, ooh. Ooh. ooh, ooh. You remember that, D-Wade? <laughs> you remember the that, D-Wade? The dunk I've ever seen. Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> that was that top ten right there in, in, in the whole history of the NBA. <laughs> in the history of the NBA right there. 
Yeah, that, that might be better than LeBron or Damon last year, but yeah, that was top 10. It was amazing, dog. Man. Watch me underneath. Woo! Watch me underneath. <laughs> <laughs> what you say to him, Mark? I was cheering question. like I did it. I was like, that's what you get messing with me. Look at that. That's when you have a big bro that could just go up to another level that nobody else could. I stand by this. He was my favorite dunker when I was in college, and I got the opportunity to play with him. And even when I got to play with him, he was far greater, far more athletic than anything I could imagine. I want to share something with that. D-Way, the funny thing I remember about us is when we play in uh, the dunk on Zoe and us running down the court together, having a little laugh. He's like, why you do my big thing like that? And I'm not going to talk about the other guy who's on the far end down there. <laughs> what, what he had to say. That was one of the times. So. He cut that Zoe's thing back on so that. so hard. I was like, man, oh, man. <laughs> but he paused in the midair. Like, that was the crazy yes, thing about did. the dunk, Shaq, is he paused in midair and let Zoe fall to the ground and then boofed him. Yeah. <laughs> but but, 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 but uh. anyway, what, what's crazy is I, at halftime, I just told D, D, uh, RJ, I said, look, we had, we had got a little weak dunk on him, both of us. I said, he's not going to let us do that again. He's going to jump at us and try to, you know, lay us out. So when he hit me, right. I went higher, and it kind of had me nervous. I was scared. I was jump. I jumped higher than I expected <laughs> to jump. So while I'm up there, I'm like, man, don't miss this dunk. And and that's what I said. Like when I dunked it, that's why I was running down. I had the beam up, but I, when I heard right you say, oh, you said, Ooh. the right there. When he hit me higher, I was like, <laughs> He's so disrespectful. Oh, he didn't talk to me like that for as he shouldn't. Six, seven years? No. Six or seven years? Yeah. He shouldn't. Not after that. <laughs> I wouldn't Would talk you still to have you no, no. now? It's a basketball play. He tried to block it. He's a shot blocker. Exactly. So it happened. But the the, you, the fashion you done it. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Why you just couldn't do it like Matumbo, just like Statue just, of Liberty. Oh, keep it up. Yeah. No, no, no. Because you, I thought he was going to hurt me. You I was protecting myself. Hit him, protect yourself, caught back, and then dunked on him. Like this, over here. Six like, or seven years? It was like six or seven years. Oh, I wish they could show our face. Shot, oh, Shaq, I wish they could show our face exactly. when that happened. Right. You say Vince Carter brought out the best in you. How so? Well, I was always really competitive with Vince. Vince was a year ahead of me in high school. He's still playing, by the way. Which is, which is unbelievable. I mean, I saw him windmill the other day. which just goes to his insane athletic ability. Yeah. Dominique Wilkins. Michael Jordan, Dr. J, Vince Carter, and yourself. Now, that is a powerhouse. You guys had all won dunk contests in the past, so I'm curious, in the prime of all those players' careers, who wins a dunk contest? Uh, Vince. Here is the man that this crowd wants to see. Here is Vince Carter with his first stop. A couple of tricks up my sleeve. I'm coming up with this stuff tonight, and it's working. It's over for people. Hey, ain't no point total. He's off the charts. I mean, really off the charts. The arm in the rim, for instance. I didn't want to hear a ooh-ah. I wanted to hear nothing. I wanted the crowd to be in awe and not say a word. Yeah, I would say Vince. I, I got it. Yeah, you know, I had you know, fit. Vince is uh, Vince. No, you, you know, Vince is a special dunker, man. Did you see what he can do? He's a special dunker. I mean, he's a, he's a special, special dunker. And I think MJ, you know, did some stuff that was revolutionary for his time, as did Dr. J. And uh, you know, the way Vince dunks the ball, you know, the way that he's dunked the ball when he was in a dunk contest was just was unbelievable. What did Vince Carter mean to you as a basketball player? Because yeah. I know, like, for me, you know, Vince Sanity, yeah. half man, half amazing. Half man, we can amazing. keep going all yep. day. But, like, what was it about Vince Carter that kind of, you know, inspired you See, as a basketball player? So, I mean, I've been watching Vince since he was in high school, you know, even as a young kid and, um, you know, watched him in the McDonald's game. Obviously, I followed him. I mean, I was a huge, I wanted to go to North Carolina at the time. So him going to Carolina, it was like, okay. You know, watching Ed Cota throwing the lobs to him with him and Antoine Jameson and, and all those guys on that team. So I'm watching, when you're watching Vince, you are understanding this guy is bigger than North Carolina. He's the guy in a college game that gets about 12 to 14 points 
but you like he has no business out here on this court. Yeah, for sure. He's out here. This is just straight up. He's just straight for the conditioning. And when he gets to the next level, whoever gets him is going to be is going to be special. So, you know, for me and for all of us, it's something about it's something about basketball when a guy can literally when you really look at him and you think he's flying. You're like, how did he just do that? And Vince was that guy. Vince was that guy where you like, if he get one dribble inside that three-point line, you better move. Even in college, right? Even in college. <laughs> you better move or you're going to be on the poster. And every, for a kid like myself who started to find his way with some athleticism, you looked at Vince like, Damn, I ain't going to be able to get to that point. But if I can get half or three-fourths of it, you know, yeah. then I'm doing something right. Vince had kids actually believing that they can jump if they put on a pair of Nike shocks. Very true. <laughs> I, did I have a pair? You had a pair? I absolutely had the white and green. Had, man. I had white. No, you, I had everybody didn't green. have a pair. Everybody had a pair. I didn't I, have a pair until I, I got listen, drafted. I had a pair. Listen, if you, Vince, no, but Vince really had you believing yeah. that the shock technology <laughs> in those shoes would make you jump 100%. like that. No, 100%. There's, it's, <laughs> he really had you believe in that, man. Yeah. He, he really had you believe in that. What was now, your first pair, though? What was your first pair? Mine was the the black, uh, yeah, the, the black, black the silver, the raptor color. Yeah, raptor color. The, the shock was. I didn't in, get them to the twos. The shock White was in red. silver. Were they in your locker when you got drafted? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah look. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, it's hard to pick one Vince Carter story, but I will go back to the beginning, Vince. So 2000, 2001, I'm in Marquette University and I'm I'm red shirting. I'm sitting out. And my team went on the road, um, and the Milwaukee Bucks was playing the Toronto Raptors. No changes for the Bucks tonight up front. Glenn Robinson, Joel Prisbilla, and Mark Pope. The backcourt, Sam Cassell and Ray Allen. For the Toronto Raptors, it's Corliss Williamson, Antonio Davis, and Charles Oakley. Vince Carter in the backcourt with Mark Jackson coming over from the Indiana Pacers. So I didn't have a ticket to the game, but I decided to go to the arena and with hopes that the security who worked our games, because we played at the Bradley Center as well, would let me in. They did. They let me in and I was sitting up there with the retired jerseys real high up. But I got there early because Vince Carter was, was famous for his, his pregame workouts, right? So before the games started, Vince Carter would put on a dunk show, man. And like, I'm talking about all the dunk contest dunks Vince Carter would do. And one of my favorite things that you did at the end before the game started is you always grab the net and you always lift yourself up and did chin-ups on yep. the net. And if you yep. know, or anybody who know me, once I got to the NBA, I would grab the rim before every game and I would do chin-ups on the rim. And it all started from being that little kid, that young kid that got a chance to get into the arena to see one of his favorite players do some amazing, amazing things. So thank you for inspiring me, Vince. Thank you for inspiring a whole generation of players, not only in Canada, but around the world, man. You are one of our goats, and uh, just thank you. No, thank you, man. Golly, that's crazy. Look, I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> I'm not even going <laughs> to lie to you. My first game, we playing against Vince Carter. Uh, We're playing against Vince, and, you know, I'm in there cocky. Man, these trash, <laughs> man. The TV make these players look better than they really are. <laughs> and he missed, like, two straight shots, so I'm all right. Trash. I knew he was trash. And then he got mad uh -huh. and then got in the post spin move and cocked it all. Oh, boom, <laughs> right? I jumped out the seat. Yo, oh my God. I'm on the court. <laughs> Joe, y'all see that? And then I had to realize I was in the NBA. Like, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on the bench like, yo, did you see that? Man, he didn't touch the, his head. I don't, like, it was the best thing I've ever seen. But what ended up happening was reality kicked in yeah. because I'm like, he just did that to Jason Richardson. And Jason Richardson, athleticism is, huh. And then it's like, I just seen somebody who go, huh. And I'm here. And I'm like, oh, man, I can't even play in this league, bruh. 
And <laughs> I got so depressed just from the dunk, realized like, yo, I'm not, I don't have this type of athleticism. Yeah. So I spent, I ain't go, I spent probably the first part of the season just like, I can't do this. Just, I, I can't do none of that. Yeah. Kobe, I can't, I can't even guard him. Ray Allen, I can't even guard him. Like these, these people, I can't even, and I was doing that to myself. You know what I mean? You, you know, we, we tend to look at what we can't do because someone else can do it instead of looking at what we can't do, what they can't do. The passion that's, that stood out to me when I watched him after he dunked, after he made a big shot and how much he loved to play, you know, you could tell he was excited. That just made me go out there and be more free as a player when I was a kid. Cause I'm just like, if he expressing himself like that, I think I can too, you know? So I think I took that from Vince, you know, obviously his highlights and his athleticism stood out, but like his passion for the game is something that I really appreciated. Golly, I mean, it's an honor. Like I say, I've, I've, I've watched Kevin obviously going against him and everything and just, just think back in t back to his career. Well, first of all, I'll say I once heard the whispers. Yeah, he got me right there on the crossover. <laughs> Ooh, caught me right there. Caught me slipping. But no, I mean, and, and he hit the game winner after I hit that shot. I, I mean, I remember all of these. But let me tell you, uh, I heard whispers, and I was like, okay, you know, he's a he's a fan. Oh, I'm his favorite That's player. Nothing. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you know. But people say that, and then to to actually hear from the horse's mouth, it's just, I mean, it's unbelievable. And getting the opportunity to play play against him, watching him as a rookie. And remember hearing how they said, could he survive in the league because he wasn't strong enough and so on and so <laughs> forth to watch him grow into the best score in the game's history. I mean, offensively, what can he not do? I mean, he could do it all. He, you know, at one point it was like, oh, he, he, he can only go left in the hesitation and in scouting. That's what he, you, know, you guard him on. And now he can go right. He can go whatever he wants. He'll pull up. He can shoot. He can do it all. So it's just been great to see him mature, grow. And, and become a champion and do it his way. Absolutely. Well, it's an honor in both directions, Vince. Hey, so t t talk about teaming up um, with Kate, with KG, Ray Allen, Peyton, oh, Jason man. Kidd, and uh, gold medal team. It was a dream come true for me, man. It was talked about, obviously, the, you know, you're talking about 92 and the dream team, and then you had dream team two. Then comes us in 2000. And the funny thing about it, guys, I wasn't on the initial team. Uh, I didn't make it. So Shaq was supposed to be on that team. Grant Hill was supposed to be on that team. And I'm missing another mm -hmm. name because I think Grant was hurt or Shaq. I know Shaq was, was hurt as well. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was supposed to be on the team. And then Tom mm -hmm. Gugliotta got hurt. So Goose. Ray Allen Ray Allen actually made the team over me. And we played each other that night in Toronto. Vince Carter had three games that were subpar for him after the announcement was made and he hits his first shot tonight. And he'll be on an Olympic team. No doubt about that, just not this one. Carter two for two. Carter for three. Carter over Robinson. It's Carter. Carter windmills for 47. What kind of work and you give it, 47. But it, it, it had nothing. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Hey, you see, listen. I didn't say nothing. You see, I didn't say nothing, man. I kept Ooh. quiet. With hey, he quiet. said 40, 47. But, but, but that's not but, what I'm talking but, about. Kept quiet. It was one of those things I wanted to show. More so, it had nothing to do with him. I wanted to show the Olympic folks that, you know, I'm worthy. They made the wrong choice, right. That, that, to be on that squad. I hit, like, my first eight shots. I, ain't, I was eight for eight from the beginning. I was just mm -hmm. in another zone, bro. I was in another zone. And then... Weeks later, Tom Gugliotta gets hurt. I get that call. Would you like to be? Would I like to be? Hell yeah. So yeah. I missed the original team, the original photo. I was Photoshopped in. Wow. <laughs> so when you see that picture, like, I'm on there, I had to take a picture and then to get Photoshopped in. They didn't Photoshop that metal, though. But... Right. So from there, I had to, I was like, <laughs> bro, I got to go. Uh, I had to go earn my way. But it was, it was all worth it, man. It was fun. It was great. You know, I was going through some ups and downs in my life, really. That's why I had the fro and all that. Me and GP rocking Ooh. the fro out there. Some, something different. Something different. Hey, so. that was my favorite mm -hmm. outside. I mean, the dunk, the, the gold medal. My favorite part was seeing Vince with the fro. Dunk you jumped higher. You bro, jumped higher. You had the fro. Dunk everything. Bro. I was angry. <laughs> I was angry. Man, ain't dunk. no lie. He's like, young fella, you know, GP, they can't <laughs> jump with you, young fella. So anytime you halfway open, I'm throwing them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the rest was history. Just making history. Just doing some crazy stuff. And then the dunk happened. So let me ask you a question. Right. Does he have one of the best dunks in basketball history? VC has he jumped over the seven footer in the Olympics. Listen, 
best in-game dunk that you will ever see in NBA history. Line them up with any of them. Mais euh, j'oublierai jamais ce que j'ai pu vivre, surtout en l'an 2000. Quoi. 2000, 2000, that was a memorable moment. I don't know if everybody got the opportunity to see that dunk. His name was Frederick Weiss from France. So the the funny thing about the Olympic dunk um, is that it was more so more so instinct, and I was just trying. It was a it was a, a pass he threw. He threw the ball behind his back. I get the steal. I want to be, get back and attack the rim before the rest of their defense kind of gets back into the play. The opportunity was there, take advantage of it now. One, two, one dribble, two dribble, go. And it was kind of like a read. One dribble, he didn't move. Two dribble, he's still there. Attack the rim, and I, I, all, I, all I could see was the rim. And when Vince went up, we was like, oh, he ain't gonna make this, man. He just gonna do flip show. Cause I was standing there like this, and Garnett was coming behind me. And Garnett was like, he gonna gift it off to me. But then all of a sudden, I was right over on the side, and I said, oh, he going up. Up, he, I said he going up some more. I said, whoa! And I see that. I see the rim. I don't see him. I see the rim. So I ain't pay attention to where I was jumping from. So you know the, the paint is, is is different than the NBA. It's a different so shape. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's wider. So yeah, uh huh. In in my mind, so when I jump, I see him, and all I remember, God's my witness, all I remember is touching his shoulder with my left arm. Oh, I'm Ooh. I'm focused on the rim because I thought I jumped too far. They were going in transition, so my team is running back on defense. So I just attacked the rim. So when I jumped, I hit him. I didn't even think about him no more. I thought he moved out of the way, or he tried to take a charge and fell down. So if you go back and look at it, I stretch out, because I'm reaching for the rim, because I thought I was mm -hmm. too far. But I end up dunking the ball with my wrist, because mm. I was, I, I actually mm. had enough, you know, flight time. You was high. You yeah. My left hand touching the shoulder. And my focus now is the rim, because in my mind, I felt like I jumped too far, and I wasn't going to make it. And I was like, he ain't going to make this. And all of a sudden, boom, he I said, uh-oh. I said, this is going to be a highlight deal forever. The celebration that everybody saw where I almost knocked Kevin Garnett out was because we're, we're celebrating two totally different things, first of all. My celebration when I almost punched KG, I was celebrating that. I wasn't celebrating that I jumped over him because I didn't know. That's crazy. That was my favorite. That was my favorite part of the dunk, seeing you that's, and KG. That was hard. KG, because KG bro, went nuts. Right. We were celebrating two totally different things. Yeah. <laughs> that's just crazy. He was celebrating because he watched me jump over a seven foot guy. I was celebrating because I did not think that I was going to make it. And I thought that I was going to fall short of the rim and bust my face open and embarrass myself in front of the rest of the world. So I never actually knew I jumped over him until later on. Wait, that's like game. you said, that's all instinct. Yeah, that's nothing that's that all you it was. plan. That's nothing that you think about. I didn't when, even think I could do something like yeah, that. First of all, you just think about attacking him. That's you, it. You see a big guy, you say, oh, I'm, I'm going to get him. I'm going, I'm going right I'm at him. I'm going right at him. That's it. it. Those things happen kind of organically. You don't, you can't plan that. If I had the ball running the fast break, Vince Carter was on one end and Jesus was on the other one, I had to throw it to Vince Carter. I know that Michael, you know, meant a lot for the NBA. And I think right now Vince is that same type of commodity. The comparison view is deja vu for Carter, who has been there, heard this before. It, it was more pressure coming out of high school into college, into North Carolina. That's when you, you know, you, you started to hear it. And that's when I think a lot of pressure. Now it's like, I was just like, here we go again. No matter how breathless his play, how fair is it to mention Vince in the same breath? That is unfortunate because, as you know, no two players are alike and the similarity may be exciting dunks, but they're a different type of players. I can see it, but let's not get ridiculous. You're talking about Michael Jordan. The difference in him is that um, Vince does not have the ball handling ability that MJ had um, or understand uh, what his shot selections are, that MJ had a better feel for it. MJ is often imitated, never duplicated, but he you have to say that He's the next thing close to MJ. They can hang in the air, uh, make other opponents just fear, feel like scared or just don't want to be around him because they don't want to be on their poster. And it's tough. It's tough to be out there and try to come up with something that the fans haven't seen. Michael, move over. Somebody's coming to get your best dunk ever. How would you do in a dunk contest with Vince Carter today? 
Oh, and, you know, I'm 37 years old. I think you have the advantage. But if you talk about when I was younger, I think we can have a really good competition. I'm referring to when you were younger. I think it would be fun. I think the fans would certainly get uh, entertained. You know, it doesn't matter who wins because you're going to see creativity at its best. You know, I think it really shows us a, a, a part of your personality to some degree. And there it is, the complete collection of Vince Carter's greatest stories. If you would like to help me out by hitting that like button, that would be greatly appreciated. If you're new around here and you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification button so you never miss another episode in the series. And I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.